Right, hello. Uh, today I'm going to jump on a thread uh, that I picked up on from watching um, a video from Norman Maslov a couple of days ago, and then I've seen two or three other people do it as well. It seems to be a thing that's going around. I don't know who initiated it or whether there's some sort of a competition associated with it. It doesn't matter. But it's interesting because it's to select 10 albums that are your go-to albums when you go to your listening room and it's not necessarily your 10 your 10 favorite albums because you know we probably pick all the usual sub suspects um you know if you know what my musical taste is you probably know who my main artists are and, and so on and, and others will be the same but it's the ones that despite the flaws in each of these albums for some reason when you go to your listening space your listening room and you, you, you're picking a, an album from from the racks. It just seems to be, it's like a magnet. These are the ones you, you always seem to go to. So 10 albums, um, and this is my 10. So here we go. The first one is Time Out of Mind by Bob Dylan. Now I've got most of Bob Dylan stuff, seen him a few times. Um, we all know about Bob. Um, I like this album. It's produced by Daniel Lanois. Uh, so it's got some interesting um, effects on it. Um, I understand that uh, Dylan was never really happy with the uh, production on this one, uh, and so it's kind of been remixed for the um, uh, the Fragments box set, which is uh, down here. Um, but yeah, love absolutely love this album. So many brilliant, brilliant tracks. I, I won't go through it. Not Doc yet, for goodness sake. Not Doc yet. It's absolutely fabulous. Right, so that's the first one. Uh, the second one, uh, there is a connection with Bob because Mark Knopfler played with Dylan and produced Dylan um, in the 1980s. And um, this is Dire Straits, Love Over Gold. Dire Straits, absolutely fantastic band. Uh, I think I said in a recent video that I never want to hear Money For Nothing or Walk Of Life ever again. But you, you cut those two tracks out and the rest of the catalogue is stellar. Uh, this one in particular uh, is the one that I always go to because it has Telegraph Road on it. Telegraph Road, absolutely epic, fantastic track. Uh, and then, and then, you've, then you've got um, uh, Private Investigations, which um, follows it. And Private Investigations, fantastic acoustic guitar, of course and the drums when they come in it just fills the room it's it's absolutely wonderful but telegraph road is the one to go for it there so that's the album i always pick up from dire straits the third one is my favorite johnny mitchell album Najira. um here we go he has the cover this is a gatefold with all the lyrics in it um probably a 70s copy i think this one just a stunning album here um coyote amelia um what else is uh the one that yeah song for sharon is the one that um i absolutely love and of course refuge of the roads i mean it's all brilliant um Joni's fantastic of course um we've seen her again appear uh on stage uh, quite recently and there's an album coming out in well very shortly uh of her, her performances i think with is it brandy carlisle who's who's kind of working with her on um, on those shows, or that show. So that's a new album that's coming, and I'll probably get my hands on that one in due course, but this is the one to go for. Uh, something completely different, um, Brand X, Unorthodox Behaviour. Uh, Brand X, jazz fusion band that, for a time, had Phil Collins uh, as their drummer. His drumming is fantastic on this album. It sounds amazing. It's um, you've got uh, Percy Jones on fretless bass, John Goodsell on guitar. Um, oh my goodness! It's just so dynamic. It's just like if I want to test the system, um, uh, my moving the speakers to say oh, the speakers in the right place. I just let which which is my reference recording I go to. It's this one. I keep playing this one and. You play the first track, Nuclear Burn, which is stunning. And then you just leave it on because it's just brilliant. So yeah, Brand X, Unorthodox Behaviour, their debut album. Uh, again, in the 
kind of jazz field uh, one I always go to as well. This is kind of jazz mixed with uh, experimental, mixed with progressive rock. And this is Pat Metheny and Lyle Mays. As Falls Wichita, so fall Wichita, so falls Wichita Falls. <laughs> Again, beautiful, stunning album. Quite relaxed in its vibe. Uh, it's just got some beautiful melodies, loads of interesting sound effects. Uh, the title track goes on for quite a substantial period of time, 20 minutes, and it covers the whole of all of side one, uh, which has got some spoken word in it as well. Um, really, really interesting. Um, and of course it's on ECM, so the sound quality, the sound of the, of the production is uh, fantastic. So yeah, Pat Metheny and Lyle Mays. Uh, going back into my archive, if I want to listen to Genesis, this is the one I pick up. It's not my favourite Genesis album, but I do remember the time when it came out. I think it came out in December 1976. Um, and I remember Alan Freeman, uh, the radio disc jockey on Radio 1, uh, in BBC Radio 1 in the UK. He played on it just before its release, he played all of Side 1. And I remember sitting there with a microphone up against the radio recording that that uh, Freeman playing side one. And then halfway through uh, side one, uh, my mother came into the room and said, your dinner's ready or something like that. And so I'm, and I'm saying, Mama, you've just destroyed my recording. But anyway, it wasn't long before I got the album. And then I saw them three times in four days on the, the tour, just like a month or so later. Um, it's all it's I was gonna say it's all great but it's not that's not the case it has it has the magnificent uh, 11th Earl of Mar and one for the vine uh, blood on the rooftops afterglow and it's got uh, but it's one uh, bad spot is your own special way which is a song written by uh, Mike Rutherford which I think lasts about six or seven minutes it's like it's ballad um, and if it goes on for, for six minutes, it goes on for about five minutes and 59 seconds too long. It is so cheesy and was a little bit of an indicator of what was to come with Genesis in the later years. Uh, really lame in my, in, in, my, in my judgment, but yeah, absolutely fantastic album. Um, Canadian, Leonard Cohen. This is the album I go to, 10 new songs. Uh, this is a very musical album. It's it's a bit um, homogenous. Um, you've got Sharon Robinson here who does a lot of the backing vocals. I think she composes a lot of the music and plays keyboards. So it's got this kind of relaxed vibe but with this electronic stroke organ keyboard thing going on. Uh, but it's just got great singing. Um, one of the things I like about Leonard Cohen's later period is that his voice got richer and richer, deeper and deeper, um, carrying with it, in my judgment, a lot more wisdom uh, and gravitas. Uh, and this is like, for me, this is the sweet spot. Uh, the track that I would always go for here is Alexandra Leaving. Uh, Alexandra Leaving is a song about seemingly about people sitting around the deathbed of Alexandra and it's uh, at the end of each chorus it's got this is you know Alexandra leaving Alexandra lost so as she dies um, very moving it's really really good but yeah from beginning to end it's a great album um, set, third last one here I was going to say second last one is Couldn't Stand the Weather by Stevie Ray Vaughan full on blues rock tremendous the song i always go to when i want to crank up the system loud is tin pan alley which is about eight minutes slow blues not his song um but it was it's superb absolutely superb fantastic drums in there great great uh, guitar but you know very subdued um that slow blues that kind of walking blues thing works brilliantly here so yes yeah, stevie ray vaughan couldn't stand the weather um, the second last one is unfortunately on CD and if this was released on vinyl I'd buy it in a heartbeat and this is Peter Hamill and Fireships. I think this was released in 1991. Um, it's his, possibly one of his most musical albums. 
uh, easy to get into relative. Uh, if you know Peter, if you don't know who Peter Hamill is, he's he was the singer or is the singer with the kind of very dark progressive rock band called Van de Graaff Generator, and he wrote all of their songs. But he's got a fantastic solo career. I did a video on it's like best ten albums from about forty odd. Um, some time ago, but it's on the channel somewhere if you're interested in Peter Hamill. Uh, but this is uh, most accessible um, if you're a newcomer to Peter Hamill. Uh, sounds great, beautifully recorded, keyboard washes in the background, acoustic guitar mostly, and his his lyrics and his voice are um, just outstanding. And the last one I always go to, if I fancy a bit of Donald Fagan or Steely Dan, it's Gaucho. This is the one that um, I go to because, I mean, a lot of people go for um, Aja. Um, but I think that's a sterile album uh, to me. I don't really enjoy that album much at all. The Royal Scam is the one that uh, got me into Steely Dan. Uh, but this is the one I go to. Um, I know it's not commonly regarded as their their best album but i think it's great i think the songs are absolutely great and third world man which closes side two is just wonderful very very slow but just wonderful uh yeah so that's steely dan gaucho so those are the 10 albums that i go to when i come in here and i think what am i going to play tonight and i haven't thought about it invariably it's one of those that kind of hits the deck first so there you go I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.